Rev up your engines! Now it's come to my attention recently by fixing customers' cars that these little adapters that you put in your car to run anything like your phone or a computer that are 5 volts that plug into the cigarette lighter or your power probe, they can cause problems in your car that you would have never thought. And they do it through the process of electromagnetic interference. You can't see it. And let's face it, even the physicists don't really understand electromagnetic stuff. It's even beyond them when it comes to how this stuff actually works. Just like gravity, you can't see it, but you can certainly feel it. If you jump up, it pulls you back to the planet. Well, electromagnetic interference on a modern day car can wreck all kinds of havoc. So I'm gonna tell you how you can keep that from happening with these little bitty adapters in your car. Now, modern cars have everything run by computer. Electricity, magnets, and a lot of the systems even are using RFI, they're using radio frequencies, like your keyless ignition if you have that. The keyless ignition sends a radio frequency to your car, so it's okay to start it up. Well, guess what? These little babies put out some radio frequency too. Now, these little adapters may look simple, but they're actually not. To begin with, you plug them in, they take the 12 volt DC of your car and use a solid state system that switches the DC voltage of your car into high frequency AC voltage. Then that AC voltage goes through a coil, a diode, and a capacitor to become 5 volt DC. <laughs> it's a lot more complex than you might thought the stupid little thing is. Now, if done correctly, it works perfectly fine, but as everyone's aware, you can get dirt cheap models of these. You can get them at a gas station, a hardware store, or you can see them in a drugstore. But it's not a good idea to buy one of those cheapies. As I just explained, they're pretty complex inside. If they have cheap parts, maybe they generate a little bit too much AC high frequency. That's broadcast all through your car can mess things up. And you certainly don't want to overload your system using too much on one plug. This has two, I advise only one. I've seen some that had four. You don't want to buy a cheap one. I personally use a Qualcomm one. Hey, it's like 20 bucks. It's not that big of a deal. But I don't advise going by the $8 or cheaper ones. And don't overload the amperage ratings. Where are you plugging it in? Well, for the device itself. I've had customers plug these in, put some laptops and stuff on them. They've actually started to melt these things from too much amp draw. Take this cheap one here. It's only rated at two amps. So you put more amperage than that, you can cause problems. Now the worst problem I ever saw was on a customer's Subaru. It was an Outback, had a bunch of plugs, the kids were always running stuff. One day they got in the car, it wouldn't start. So they towed it in, I hooked up my scan tool, couldn't find any particular problems. But since I realized these things can cause your car to go a bit wonkers, I look in the car, four of these things plugged in all over the place. So I thought, what the heck? Do a little Sherlock Holmes. I went through the car and I unplugged them all out of the adapters. Then, since it was a keyless ignition, I didn't have to turn the key. I already had that in my pocket. I just went to push the start button and guess what? Started right up. <laughs> Radio interference that was created by this little thing that turns the DC to AC and then back to lower DC was interfering with a signal between the key and the computer and it wouldn't let the car start. I've seen it trip airbag codes. When I scanned it, it didn't show any codes. So I saw the same thing. There were a bunch of these adapters plugged in. Reset the computer and I drove it around and uh, the code never came back. And months later they said, nah, it never came on again. We don't plug all those things on again. And we took your advice and bought more expensive ones when we are using them. I've seen cars where automatic Tire pressure monitoring system was tripping codes. Now that makes total sense because this is broadcasting RFI. And tire pressure monitoring systems, each valve stem is broadcasting radio frequencies into the car to tell what the pressure of the tires is. These were interfering with it. Because when you think about it, these are kind of stopgap measures. You plug them into an adapter or something. If you're really serious about electronics, what you really need is Get yourself one of these power inverters. Hook it directly to the battery. Because when you do that, you're going directly off the battery. You're not tapping off the wiring system of the car that can create problems. Then you have whatever power you want. This one has a couple of USBs, 110 volt ones that you can plug stuff into. These are for serious electronic use. Wire it to the battery, like I said, and you can put this under the seat, you can put it wherever you want. Then you have a good supply of power that isn't going to interfere with stuff. Because modern cars, with all their wiring and computers, 
I've seen a lot of kids, they'll put in a fancy stereo system in their car. And they'll just go under the dash and they'll find a power wire that has power when they turn the key on and they'll start wiring stuff off of that. You can destroy computer systems doing that. If you're real serious about power in your car, hey, put an inverter in it. Then you can have all the power you want running directly off the battery with its own fuse going to the battery so you're not taxing the electronics of the car in a way it wasn't designed for. When I had a customer who was having a problem and I unplugged it and it went away, I thought, gee, I wonder if you can stop the uh, RFI interference from coming out. So I just got a little aluminum foil and I wrapped it around the thing. Well, that was enough to keep the waves from escaping and it didn't have the problem anymore. So if you want to wrap any kind of insulation around these things, it's going to stop most of the radio interference from being broadcast out of the thing. But I've also found that I had no problem in any of my cars because I buy a quality one that has one tap coming out, not two or three or four. I use this Qualcomm one and like I said, it's around 20 bucks. They seem to be a lot better made and they don't put out as much RFI as the really cheap ones do. And of course realize that if you're powering devices with these that themselves put out radio waves, in this case microwaves, that can eventually cause a problem. If you've got too many people using too many phones, too many other wireless devices in a car, it can make strange things happen. Because you can't see electromagnetism unless you have a rather strange brain and senses inside it. It's out there doing its thing 24 hours a day whether you know about it or not. So if your car does seem to be acting weird, hey, unplug every single one in your car for a couple of days, drive it around. Because computers, hey, they're always checking for problems in your car as you drive. And if that's the problem and you take it out, within a day or two of driving, let's say your check engine light or something's on, if it goes away, it can do that automatically and you'll know that it was these stupid things putting radio interference and messing with your car's electronics. And if your car is older, doesn't have built-in USB ports, hey, get one of these inverters. This thing, hey, it's good enough to run a refrigerator. It'll certainly run anything they've got going in the back seat. And since this is Mechanic Monday, I'm gonna give away one of these Qualcomm adapters that doesn't create problems. They have a chance to win, just place a clean, non-offensive comment on the YouTube comments below, and a winner will be chosen randomly by computer to get a high quality Qualcomm USB adapter so you can use your devices to your heart's content and not worry that it's messing with your car's electronics. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.